case study from Renew uh, Education. And we're looking at this case that we did look at the bottom already, but we're going to only look at this upper part right here on this molar. And I'm going to call this one Healing Comparison Upper First Molar. Not a very sexy name, but oh well. Um, and what I wanted to do was just kind of look at this side here where it's already healed on number three. And then look at if there's anything to help us here to think about how number 14 is actually going to heal. She has a second molar that's collapsed into the number three site. The number two is collapsed into that site. So it's a bit of a pinch. You're not going to restore that. But because of how these roots are and how this bone is around it uh, gives us an indication that something's very similar going on here. So let's look at our treatment assessment. Once again, we did on the lower, uh, we had good bone density is in the light green. We have a facial bone as an orange. Bone constriction is at a yellow. Detached gingiva and sinus bone are orange. Uh, IA nerve is a green and bone characteristics in the ridge height are, well, bone characteristics is yellow and then a, a ridge height is going to be um, low because of here, that's a red. But uh, we're only talking about this upper one anyway right now, so uh, that doesn't really apply. So let's look at the CT here. Uh, we want to look at this right here. I want to see what that quality looks like. Okay, not too bad. Better on the lower, obviously. But it's not the worst in the world, that's for sure. Um, so maybe it might get a yellow on the upper arch, but that's pretty good, actually. It's not too, too bad. So that's all you got. And it's a little bit more narrow than where the tooth is. You've got maybe uh, six millimeters, six and a half. Uh, so now let's, let's remember that for a second and try to take your vision over to this side here. And what we're seeing is something very similar is going to happen once you take the tooth out. See, the bone quality looks pretty good. Uh, and you got that six and a half millimeter, and that doesn't look too far off of probably where it's going to be. You've got this tooth that's really just ate out any facial plate possible. You've got the weird lingual root kind of going in there. I'm not really even sure. This is kind of a weird tooth, the way it's kind of uh, sat in there. It's got some curved roots and kind of throws off the idea. Let's let's see if we can get this slice view here to go through. Um, see if that helps us. So now I'm going to go up into the sinus area. Here's the ridge part. Um, I'm, you can see the infected area. It's hard to see and it just goes away here. So now we're, we're getting into the sinus here. So the sinus shows up there. Here's where that number 14 is. And here's the infected area. Look how much is kind of blown out here. And then you got the lingual root here or whatever is going on. Oh, that must be part of the premolar. Uh, yeah, it's hard to tell what exactly is going on here. Because it looks like there's like two roots. I'm not sure. Maybe the tooth is turned. Something's really kind of funky. Maybe this is the palatal root. Second molar has one root all together. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird. Uh, that's definitely part of these two roots here. I'm not really clear on what's going on there. So anyway, the problem you're going to face here is how is this going to be restored? It's kind of unpredictable. And... You're going to graft this site as much as you can. There's not much to graft to. So that's a little bit of a dilemma is how do you preserve this? So you can do uh, some sort of a guided, you know, bone type of stuff with a lot of membranes and try to get something. And if you do do that, you're probably not going to get a whole lot of bone that you're, you've really saved here. Uh, so is it really worth doing all that? In my mind, not too much. Um, you know, it's 
it's a lot of a lot of expense trying to get that to save and you're not saving that much if you did a small particulate graft and let that cover up you're probably get a very similar result here in the upper area so now when we have this much bone let's put an implant in there I'm gonna pick a five millimeter diameter because that's what I like in those areas so let's grab one of those here's one let's do it by eight millimeters long I want something longer but this could possibly fit pretty well and your your choice here is do I just go with the short implant and try to restore 14 with that after the initial healing period uh, so this is an eight nine month project it's a two bone healing event or what you can do is take that implant here and you bump it into the sinus but you don't have to necessarily graft it you're gonna want to take a 10 millimeter and put that in and now you're gonna be into the sinus of hair let me center that a little better so let's suppose that the actual graft has ended and this is the line where the graft in the bone actually is so you could actually restore this just like this and put the implant in now because the bottom is struggling so much on trying to maintain anything the question is is what now dictates what if you are looking at this case and saying for sure we got to restore this hold on a second you're only going to restore this if you restore this all the way back into the first molar position on the lower and this is part of the step discussion that i was saying we're going to have with the patient is let's let's see if that's even worth doing um let's move this if we can this seems really kind of distorted uh let's fix that a little better a uh, little better okay so if you only restored on the treatment plan we discussed on the bottom with a premolar here you're kind of wasting the patient's time money and effort to restore this upper first molar if the patient insists they want to feel a full you know set of occlusal teeth here without it occluding anything you know I guess that's what she's gonna spend the money for but I would highly highly to have this discussion that this has to be a partnership and if you're gonna spend the money and expense on this I would say um, you might then that might encourage the all on four type of hybrid or the full arch lower model for this patient uh, otherwise don't bother restoring that and save the money until you feel like the lowers have to go or something to do a full restoration I would probably even encourage doing a bridge here to kind of close up that gap if you restore this back so she gets a little bit more chew pattern here so this is a challenging scenario. You're not going to do a bridge here because one of uh, hygiene, but two, uh, this is a splinted system here. I'm not clear on what they did here. It's some sort of Maryland bridge attachment with two pontics and then two splinted teeth here. Seems to be working for the patient, but um, not something I would recommend doing either. But that's a that's an interesting dilemma here on trying to do heroics into an area that may not actually matter in the first place. So um, getting into this, putting a longer implant or using a shorter implant, really if there's no partnership, doesn't make a difference what you do. If the patient just wants a tooth in there, then I recommend maybe just grafting a socket graft, make it simple let it heal, put in a short implant, put the crown on top, and then she feels like she's got something. 
uh, that should work out fine if you think more long term and the patient might be missing her teeth in the near future then a longer implant and then you can move it into a, some sort of full arch piece or a locator attachment overdenture or something like that on the bottom really dictates what you want to do on the top so well that's another one for us uh, thanks for joining us uh, please Look at our other case studies uh, that I've been doing and like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube and join us, put in comments, questions, whatever you want. Most of the time I'm only answering those when you go onto a live stream. So.